The following podcast is taken from a live broadcast on Inspire FM. Good afternoon, everybody listening, and welcome to the Ask Your Lawyer show on Inspire FM. My name is Esther Lassahinde of Liberty Law Solicitors, and with me on mic four, I have Dean Garrett. Hi, listeners. Thank you so much for joining me today, Dean, for this show. So we thought from the last time we were on, I think towards the end of the year, we had quite a you know serious topic. We normally cover employment law, but we thought today that we would have a bit of a laid back um, segment, something a bit not lighthearted, but just something easy that the listeners can have a listen to. And um, so obviously, as we all know, we have officially left the EU. When was that, Friday, Dean? It was Friday, 11pm. 11pm. Um, and I think since the referendum, how many years has it been? Oh, over three years Over now. three years. Three I think, years of long, you know. Yeah, back and forth and d- divide within the country. But I think everyone's a bit Brexited out. But I mean, we're done now. We're out. Um, so I just wanted to ask, Dean, I know loads of people may be unaware of how the laws are going to be changing or if there are any changes because we've literally it's not even been a week yet what are we looking to expect so as part of the negotiations that were pre- uh, made under Theresa May hmm. there's a transitional arrangement period in which okay. we're now in mm-hmm. and that's going to last until um, for the next 11 months effectively mm-hmm. where in essence not a lot has changed okay so your rights to free movement remains the same Mm -hmm. Um, travel driving on the continent for example Mm. the same rules apply bringing pets abroad with you Mm -hmm. for those who you know want to bring their dogs (laughs) cats Mm -hmm. with them yeah that's still absolutely fine so we will see very minimal impact Mm -hmm. um, for the ordinary person Mm. out there and in fact actually we're going to see you know the same minimal impact for businesses Mm -hmm. the same legislation that once applied still does apply Mm. and during this transitional period what we will hear is a lot to to do with trade okay and working out that new arrangement Mm -hmm. but for this next foreseeable you know 11 months we don't have any major implications so if you want to book your your holiday but you're unsure Mm -hmm. go ahead you know because Mm -hmm. it's not going to have any impact at this moment so there will be no fees Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, I know I said at the beginning of the program that it's going to be lighthearted. Uh, the topic of today is going to be legal curiosities, fact or fable. Reason being, with this whole talk of Brexit, there's been a lot of, um, I wouldn't say panic, but back and forth between people that are want to be you know, Remainers and people that want to leave the EU. There's been talks of what legal changes there are going to be, and there's always different end of the spectrum don't you I, agree? I think the biggest argument now is instead of um you know the european union setting rules for us mm-hmm. uh, part of the whether you're a leave or a remainer mm-hmm. part of the biggest ambition was to be, make set our own rules yeah as a country mm-hmm. and so it would be quite interesting to see what were those legal oddities that we may have that mm-hmm. actually we as a country developed yeah and whether they're in still in force today because mm-hmm. we'd be quite surprised there are we'll go through the quite an extensive list but there are quite a few laws that surprisingly people do ask um some enforceable some not enforceable um but yeah should we get stuck well, in or is just anything before, you wanna, yeah go just ahead. before we do do it um i should qualify for the fees is that's I'm, i make that in reference to european countries okay still so officially this, the same rules eu regulations some mm-hmm. cons- consumer rights employment rights all apply mm-hmm. apply And we are, at this moment in time, uh, an EU member state, but in name. Mm -hmm. Okay, so while all the rules still apply to us, we no longer have any involvement in the say on how the EU goes forward. Mm, So we won't be on the negotiation table Mm. or the, uh, you know, summits, for example. That will be a key change. You will not see um, the Prime Minister, Boris Mm. Johnson, going off to an EU summit. He will simply not be invited. There are one or two little changes. Okay. Um, the reason why I bring this is, it, you know, to say that there is no changes mm. would be, you know, a bit of a misrepresentation. Okay. 
What we are going to see um, on a more light-hearted mode, um, moment is passports changing from burgundy to blue. Mm. Um, and that is just because European, uh, all EU passports from okay. member states mm-hmm. are all the same colour, burgundy. So is that implemented straight away? So if someone's passport was to be expiring in the next month and they do the application? It will be come... issued in blue. Oh, okay. Your previous passports in burgundy... That valid. will remain yeah. um, until they become invalid mm-hmm. or up for renewal. Okay. So it will be a gradual phasing in and phasing out. Mm-hmm. But yes, this is going back to the 1980s, before my time, when mm. passports were in blue. Um, oh, really? I didn't know that. Yes. Or maybe I did. <laughs> so that's one change. Mm-hmm. The second change is that the Euro- e- uh, European arrest warrant, as, crim- as criminal lawyers, mm-hmm. that has some implication. That is changing. Okay. So... We don't know the true effect of how it will affect Mm EU-wide, but certainly countries such as Germany and potentially Slovenia, their constitution doesn't permit an arrest warrant to be made against their citizens uh, unless it's to an EU member state. Mm -hmm. So technically, because we're out of the um, EU membership, their constitution forbids uh, EU European arrest warrants. Okay. So now that is something that's going to probably be on the one of the first few things on the uh, you know, list of uh, agreements mm-hmm. to be had into this transitional arrangement. Mm-hmm. But there is certainly a question mark as to whether there is an effective EU warrant mm-hmm. that system now in place for bringing back criminals uh, to the UK. Okay. Interesting. Well, we shall continue to keep um, our listeners updated as more changes, uh, known and unknown, will be made. We'll definitely come back on the show. Um, and tackle areas like criminal law, immigration, um, moving forward. And certainly Brexit is going to have a big, big part to play in how Mm -hmm. we go forward in these areas, Mm -hmm. particularly on employment law. We're going to see a lot of rights and movements change. Oh, interesting. I was thinking maybe more immigration and criminal. Well, Well, I I guess every area of law that we we have covered and will continue to cover, I'm sure um, our exit from the EU will have an impact on those areas of law. So we shall keep you... Um, our listeners updated so moving forward to the so-called fun part of the show we're going to go into our segment of legal curiosities fact or fable again these are just laws that um are that we are bound by and some that are maybe would you say mythical so it's not really what people think we're bound by. It was law, but it's either been reformed. Yeah, or... sort of over time, you, you know, Chinese whispers, mm. it has accumulated into certain myths mm-hmm. being, you know, and, and hopefully we'll expose a lot of those myths. Mm-hmm. The information that we've gathered today is, is from the, and from the research we've done, is from the Law Commission. Yeah. So. And what I would add is that some of these laws stem right back to the 12th century. Mm. And they're still currently in force. And in, in, in actual fact, there's a roundabout, they estimate, over 2,000 laws mm-hmm. that should be repealed, but they haven't had the opportunity to review and come round to it. Wow. And I understand there's a small team that is currently, a small team of consisting of around three reviewing lawyers mm-hmm. who are siphoning through legislation to identify these laws mm-hmm. and to put them forward for repealing. Okay, I'm sure a few of them are in this list because <laughs> some are quite ridiculous. Okay, so... Moving forward, the first question, which is a common question asked regarding the area of law, is, Dean, is it illegal to enter the House of Parliament wearing a suit of armour? I have no idea why someone would, but if they were to, is it an illegal offence? It is, and it stems from a law from 1330, the statute forbidding um, bearing uh, an armour. Okay. Um, And it forbids MPs from wearing uh, suits of armour into the House. Now, if we think of this, it sounds absurd, Mm -hmm. and it is. And if anyone has ever visited the Houses of Commons, you will see that there is actually a place where you can hang up your suit of armour before entering the House of Commons. It's still there. It's still there. (laughs) Tradition. uh, It's a house built on Mm. tradition Mm -hmm. um, and oddities such as this. Mm -hmm. But it actually carries quite a practical element. Mm. Back in the day, I could imagine you know, where it was common for knights and... Yeah, it was back in 1313, yeah, so, yeah. You know, gentlemen, the gentry coming in, wearing, you know, bringing swords in, shields. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're having a a ferocious debate over taxes, for example, Mm -hmm. I'm sure you wouldn't want the introduction of weapons nearby. Mm -hmm. So for us, 
as stupid as it sounds, it, it probably made sense for the time. Mm-hmm. Now, it, it, it sounds absurd. I mean, even if we try to apply it to now, maybe it could be up for interpretation as to what is armour. Because when I think of armour, I think of um, shields and uh, metal, heavy metal. Armour could be maybe a vest, a bulletproof vest, or... I, I don't know. I think it's up for interpretation, but we'll, we'll, we'll see if that law has been repealed or not yes <laughs> okay uh next question is is it illegal to die in parliament another parliament question i'll be honest this is a myth that i believed for a while actually really? how come well the the how i understood it mm-hmm. uh as a as a law student was parliament can itself never die and it's one of these rituals mm-hmm. and um so what the logic here was is if you had died in parliament you wouldn't be declared as dead until you had left the building. Okay. Okay. Be- and it, it ha- it's meant to have ritual meaning and cultural meaning mm-hmm. to embody the, the house itself. Yeah. You know, parliament itself will never disband mm-hmm. uh, or perish. Um, the other myth, which I wasn't aware of, but researching into this was that uh, there was there is a belief that if you died under um, the statue of Bear with me one second. The Coroner's Act 1988, okay. so quite a recent law. Mm. Um, you you would have a state funeral if you had died in Parliament. According to that act. Yeah. However, that's seen, that since has been dispelled. Okay. And there has been members who have actually died in the House of Commons, mm-hmm. and more famously Guy Fawkes, who mm-hmm. we celebrate on the 5th of November. Yeah. Um, the most recent one was Sir Alfred Bill, Bilson, Bilson okay. uh, who died in 1907, casting his vote on a sugar duty bill. Um, in fi- uh, famously, the only prime minister to have been assassinated, um, Spencer Percival, mm-hmm. he was shot and he died in the lobby of the house. Okay. Um, and none of these, even the prime minister, received a state funeral. Mm. So okay. I think that dispels the myth. Yeah. Spells it quite greatly. Okay, um, next question is, is it illegal to place a stamp of the Queen upside down on a letter? Now, before you go into that, I've always heard that it is illegal. So, is it illegal? <laughs> well, on the on the face of it, it sounds almost absurd. Yeah, and I wonder why that was And then, w- When I first looked into it, mm-hmm. my gut instinct was no. Yeah. And... Uh, Essentially, for for the Treason Act, it's anything to do with disposing of the monarch, so opposing her and seeking her removal. Mm-hmm. So looking at whether a stamp placing her upside down, mm-hmm. while if you're doing it out of protest may not be pleasant, mm-hmm. I suppose, to the Queen, but mm-hmm. I, I do not Could imagine she would really be that offended. Yeah. Um, it doesn't seek to dispose of her. Uh, so essentially, no, it's a myth. Mm-hmm. What is interesting is um, the Royal Mail um, have actually confirmed that it will have no effect if you um, place a stamp upside down. Oh, interesting. So it won't get returned to sender. Yeah, though it is advisable that you place it rightly Mm -hmm. and in the top right corner. (laughs) Okay. Um, Next question, again, about the monarch. Um, Is it illegal to stand within 100 yards of the reigning monarch without wearing socks? No, but I feel I should qualify this uh, okay. law. Um, back during Henry VIII and uh, the Tudor era, mm-hmm. up to Elizabeth I, there, if you, you know, from the, watching TV and the dramas mm. and the, you know, films, they wore extravagant clothing, mm-hmm. quite puffy and, you know, so forth, outrageous, almost to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. Um, Court appropriate wear, uh, there was a law introduced as to what would be appropriate wear, wear in the court yeah. the, and, and before the monarchy. So this is where this myth of not wearing socks mm-hmm. comes into play mm-hmm. because they set a sort of criteria of what is deemed appropriate to, to wear. Yeah. Much today, you know, approaching the, you know, if you're going to visit the monarchy or, or attend something, you would look to wear suitable attire. Mm. And I think this is just an extenuation of... That. Of that. Okay, interesting. Um, next question. Is it illegal to harbour a Catholic priest? Used to be. Okay. Um, 
so it's now repealed. Okay. But we have to look at this in the context of um, um, going back again uh, to 1530s. Mm-hmm. We're under uh, Mary, Queen of Scots. Okay. Um, and we're, with her being usurped by Elizabeth I. Mm-hmm. Here, what we saw was a change bet- of battle uh, going on between Catholicism and Protestants. Mm. Um, and certainly back in the time, um, you know, there was quite an attack on Catholics and the, the establishment okay. here in the UK. So, uh, yes, used to be, but both are thankfully now repealed and rightly so. Just to quickly put another uh, note in, if there's anyone tuning in, um, this is to ask your lawyer show. You're probably wondering why we're going through such weird laws, but we just thought we'd have a laid back um, show today. Um, And the topic is legal curiosities, facts or fables. So we're just going through um, different laws throughout the time in the UK, not all the way from the beginning, but quite far back. And just to see whether these laws are myths or whether they actually are indeed um, legal. Um, so the next question um, is, is it illegal, Dean, to carry out at least two hours, so not hours, sorry, two hours of longbow practice a week? That's a bit of a strange one. Again, um, no, but I, I have to qualify this. Um, mm-hmm. It used to be law. Between the ages of 17 and 60, there was an expectation that all males within the household would, uh, would keep a longbow. Okay. Uh, so a bow and arrow, essentially, mm-hmm. um, and practice regularly. Okay. Uh, there was no requirement to do two hours, but they had to at least possess it. Mm-hmm. And again, I, I suppose this law itself hadn't actually been repealed until 1960. 1960. So as we see all these oddities that are still around, mm-hmm. they are being slowly and sh- but surely repealed, mm-hmm. but not until much later on. Yeah. And I, I think really it's because it's a law that's not... Ir- Relevant, relevant anymore yeah. um and back in the time you can imagine that if you know under different circumstances if the gathering in an army mm-hmm. um recruitment you know you there was an expectation that you should be able and willing to join and that you know one of our one of the things that part of the uk history is the longbow and the association with it okay. and then it's archers so but I have to call, draw comparisons to this mm. with Switzerland, actually. Okay, I was going to say something else, but carry on. I'll well, with after. Switzerland, there's an, um, it's mandatory for all um, for men to in Switzerland to hold a firearm, which really? is issued by the government, the Swiss government. Okay. And the logic behind that is they don't have a standing army. Oh. So should they have to call on, they would call on the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, of Swiss, Swiss, Swiss people mm-hmm. to come out and you know and there's an expectation that they all receive training as well wow so I don't know fully how the ins and outs of how mm. it works but you know this sort of rudimentary law mm-hmm. that may have been applicable at the time when we were you know in wars with France and you know and raising an army which mm-hmm. isn't quite in the same realms as it is today as mm. we have a modern professional army certainly in switzerland you can see an extension of that yeah and just before we go on to the next um question just to add to that it's kind of similar i know in south um korea it's mandatory for every single male i don't think it applies to females but every single male to do military service so again if they are called to war they would have um the lay person <laughs> that's going to be qualified to fight in the war so that's i would would you say that's similar yes uh, yeah yeah very, very similar mm-hmm. on that so a lot of these oddities they do you know you can see the historical the relevance. relevance yeah yeah maybe not for today but but it was worth you know, on the, on this matter, it was worth looking into the Law Commission, who mm-hmm. actually done a recent report on this, yeah. on the oddities out there, and, and trying to put a bit of an emphasis that we should really start trimming and tidying up our mm. legislation yeah. and repealing this. A lot of the laws, as, you, as we'll come on to see, mm-hmm. actually still are in force. In because, force? Yeah. Okay. Because certainly um, people's behaviour hasn't changed. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we're not looking to see, actually we're going to see quite a lot of these laws while on the face of it look odd mm. actually are enforced for a good reason and may still apply today mm-hmm. even though we may not see convictions as such yeah. come forward but they still are play something a mm-hmm. role t- today even in modern society and I suppose that's to sh- show that 
actually people don't really change the you know we as humans nature. don't change our mm -hmm. nature mm -hmm. the ways we act mm -hmm. well applying that to the next question which i think is quite odd hopefully you can provide more clarification on it um is it illegal to crack a boiled egg at the sharp end i'm not even sure what it means by sharp end <laughs> um dean if you could provide any clarification well there is no evidence on this one oh. um but it, it stems from I believe, in part to the Gulliver Tales, I've never read a book mm. where a, a war erupted over how a boiled egg should be broken. An actual war? Yeah. From, According from to the, the tale? Yeah. Okay, I thought you went real life. Because <laughs> <laughs> I missed that one. Um, the only law that they could ever find, and it's often attributed to um, Edward VI, is theft of eggs from a bird's nest. Okay rather than how to eat them. Mm -hmm. So certainly um, birds can be endangered species and, and it's never advisable to uh, you know tamper with a bird's nest mm -hmm. at all. Um, so that law seems sensible, but certainly on how to eat an egg, mm. no, there's no such law. Okay, interesting. Um, next weird fact of uh, what's actually legal is, is it illegal, Dean, to keep a lunatic without a license? Now, I have a bit more to add to that after you've given us the answer, because I find it quite conflicting. But go ahead, Dean. Yes, an old law, but it's okay. now since been repealed. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly the phrase lunatic is, is you know, out yeah, yeah. no longer out, you know, mm -hmm. applicable here. Mm -hmm. um, before, yes, you know, it was the Madhouse Act 1774. Okay. Uh, there, there wasn't as, you know, the same support systems that we have in place or this, you know, mm. um, social services mm -hmm. and so forth, or, or even established hospitals. Yeah. So here, I, I suppose there may have been a need for it for illegal, you know, houses, mm -hmm. uh, asylum houses and so forth. So, yes. Okay. Old law, but now repealed. Okay. Is that surrounding the word lunatics? I know nowadays people that, you know, are put in maybe psychiatric hospitals and, and getting the help they need. I would have assumed that if someone does need that assistance, they would need to be sectioned. Yes. So it's referring so, to these individuals, mm -hmm. um, those who require a much more greater medical uh, assistance mm -hmm. um, and unable to look after themselves and, you know, potentially a harm to themselves mm -hmm. uh, from mental health. Um, but certainly uh, back in the back in, you know, 1876, yeah. it would, you know, it, it was a whole different era mm -hmm. um and the way and the, w the way we have an understanding of mental health now recently mm -hmm. and the growing importance attributed to it that certainly wasn't the understanding back then yeah okay thank you for providing further clarification um next one is is it illegal to impersonate a chelsea pensioner it's a bit of a weird one <laughs> So Chelsea pensioners, I know not huge amounts on mm -hmm. it, but from my limited research on it, um, it was to stop fraudulent claims being made at pretending to be a Chelsea pensioner, mm -hmm. so a, a group, an identifiable group. Okay. Um, they're no longer in existence, and, and the law um, was appealed back mm -hmm. in uh, 2008, so very recently. Yeah. Um, but certainly at the time, it was felt needed uh, to prevent pensioners from being... Um, you know, defrauded mm -hmm. the status as a Chelsea pensioner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next question um, is, is, is it illegal to damage grass? Now, this is quite broad um, because there's, I'll just, I'll let you, Dean, carry on with that. I'll put in my comments after. Okay. This is actually still in force. Mm. Okay. Um, and in fact, you know, at first when I read it, I thought, hmm, but... It falls under the Commons Act, uh, sorry, 1876, okay. Okay? which is, it makes an offence, and I'll read it out for you, to disturb, um, to interfere with or disturb a town or village green. Mm, so this is shared space between, the, you know, for all villages or townsmen mm -hmm. to use. Mm -hmm. So much in the way as we have Warden Park, yeah. this would qualify within such a legislation. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you... you the, the legislation in place was to stop you from interfering. It's stopping others from enjoying the common land. Mm -hmm. um, 
But it would actually, it's so wide, interfering with it could actually be used as if you were to disturb or damage grass, mm -hmm. you would be disturbing that enjoyment. Yeah. So it, it does apply mm -hmm. and it could actually be used for disturbing or destroying a lawn. Yeah, which is a, could be a criminal offence, is that yes. correct? Criminal damage, I believe. So, um, yeah, that is one of the ones that I understand as to why it is still um, in force. Um, I think we're about to run out of time. Um, so please, please join us um, after the break um, where we'll be continuing to disp dispel myths um, and clarify which laws are in fact a fact or fable. Um, so this is the Ask Your Lawyer show. Um, we will continue um, providing further information um, on actually fly tipping, um, which I think is an issue that um, is happening quite often in this area and getting a bit worse. So um, we will provide some knowledge on that um, area of law. So please join us back after the break um, and we'll discuss the matter further. Thank you. You're listening to an Inspire FM podcast making available our popular programmes from our daily broadcast on Inspire FM. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the Ask Your Lawyer show on Inspire FM. My name is Esther Olasa Hinde of Liberty Law Solicitors, and I am joined today on mic four um Dean Garrett. Hi there, listeners. So before the um break we were just going through well we started off talking about Brexit since we all know that we left the EU last week Friday. Friday at eleven PM. Eleven PM we're officially out of the EU. Um and with the talk of Brexit, uh, it's been I think Dean said three years plus since over three years. The, over three years since the referendum, going back and forth, deal or no deal. Um, and I feel like everybody's all Brexited out. So we thought we'd have a bit of a laid back um, show tonight. But also just to um, inform our listeners of what to expect moving forward. I know we've literally just left. There are rumours. I'm always at the higher end of the spectrum as to what's going to happen. Um, so, Dean, if you could just recap um, what exactly our listeners should be aware of. Yep. To briefly recap, then, um, we're currently now in a, a transition period, mm -hmm. which is going to last for the next uh, 11 months. Okay. And essentially what we're going to see is no major changes at all okay. for individuals or for businesses. So mm -hmm. your rights uh, of free movement um, uh, are still apply. Um, mm -hmm. There's not going to be any issues with traveling, driving on the continent, mm -hmm. um, your European health cards, which I probably didn't mention before. Mm. If you're going abroad, okay. that's still going to be active and working. So um, still keep updating your European health mm. cards and I make sure you that. do utilize them this summer um, okay. or whenever you go on your half term break. Mm -hmm. And for businesses, too. There isn't going to be any major changes either okay. um, there. And certainly what we're going to see is a lot of changes be spoken about. Um, and until it's confirmed, you know, we'll have to report back on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, no major changes at all. I did raise a few notable changes that have minimal impact, mm. such as changing of the passports from burgundy red to blue. Yep. Um, and also... Um, an issue with uh, the European arrest warrant, whether it will now apply for deportation of criminals from certain EU member states. OK, interesting. Um, and following um, that discussion, we went on to the more f fun part of the programme where we were trying to dispel different um, laws that are whether they're either standing or not standing, whether they're, sorry, legal or not illegal. So um, that was the topic that we were discussing. So, Dean, let's just have a brief recap of what um, some laws that we discussed the first half, whether they are actually fact or fable. So, Dean, is it illegal to enter the House of Parliament wearing a suit of armour? Legal. It's legal? Yeah, legal? yeah, it's in force. Oh, yes. Sorry. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me doubting myself. <laughs> is, it, is it illegal to die in Parliament? No. It's not illegal. Um, and you're probably listening, if you just tuned in, you didn't hear the first half, you're probably wondering why we're discussing this. But funny enough, some of these laws are... In force. In force, exactly. And actually, 
believed by by some. Yeah, since it's on the Law Commission page, so yeah. these are quite uh, frequently asked <laughs> questions. Um, so, Dean, is it illegal to place a stamp of the Queen upside down on a letter? No, and the Royal Mail have confirmed that it would still be acceptable. Perfect. Um, is it illegal to stand within 100 yards of the reigning monarch without wearing socks? No. Okay. Is it illegal to harbour a Catholic priest? No. Okay. Um, is it illegal not to carry out at least two hours of longbow practice? Oh, no we, longer. No longer. So that was in force, um, but no longer. That was a pe- repealed. Repealed quite, back in 1960. So quite recent. <laughs> well, not that recent, but recent enough. Yeah. Um, is it illegal to crack a boiled egg at the sharp end? No, and, and no evidence could be fo- found as to why this mm. has come out. Interesting. <laughs> Quite mythical. Um, is it illegal to keep a lunatic without a licence? No longer. Repealed back in 1774. Thank you, Dean. And is it illegal to impersonate a Chelsea pensioner? No, but that was only repealed back in 2008. Oh, OK. And is it illegal to damage grass? Technically, yes. Technically, yes. Um, we went into quite a lot of detail regarding that because there's different aspects as to what damage is and what is classified as grass. Yeah, so just to recap for the listeners, the Commons Act 1876 mm-hmm. protects village greens mm-hmm. and town greens. So parks and common uses such as Warden Park, for mm-hmm. example, is protected from being interfered with uh, for the enjoyment of others. Mm-hmm. So technically, destroying grass... Uh, or the lawn of a village green Mm -hmm. would amount to an interference. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Yeah. But probably would be more now applicable to criminal damage. Mm -hmm. Criminal damage, that's what I thought. Okay, so that was what we covered in the first half. Um, We're going to continue with these um, questions as to whether these um, laws are fact or fable. So the next one is, Dean, is it illegal to be drunk on licensed premises? Yes, it is. Um, Mm -hmm. And this law stems back to 1872. Okay. And in, in actual fact, um, it's now um, been extended, if you think, with the Licensing Act 2003, okay. whereby um, you're not allowed to sell alcohol to anyone, um, well, who, anyone who's a minor, let alone, but to anyone who appears intoxicated or drunk. That's quite interesting. I won't go in too deep into it, but I feel like the next um, few... Uh, laws that will be seeing whether they're fact or fable they are quite relevant for today I mean before the break there were some questionable ones where we think where's the relevance and we did go into um, the reason as to why some were relevant for that time but um, yes regarding being drunk on a licensed premises that is quite relevant so you know there's other laws as well such as um, stemming back to 1839 which still are enforced for landlords Mm -hmm. and uh, public uh, house owners yeah. Um, you know, t- to prevent any conduct of uh, disorderly conduct or drunkenness mm-hmm. uh, on their premises. Mm. So, you know, it's good behaviour and what the expectation is. Yeah. Uh, I should add that the Licensing Act 2003, while it pr- prohibits serving uh, a drunk person, mm-hmm. it also includes, and I'm sure there's many who are guilty or may have been, mm-hmm. and, um, depending on whether you drink alcohol, mm-hmm. it, uh, buying um, alcohol for another who's intoxicated. Okay. So. Interesting. Um, next question is: Is it illegal to carry a plank along a pavement? So this is for all of our builders out there. Yes, um, it's covered by the an, another old piece of legislation, which of um, which we reference to with pub, uh, public um, ha- sorry landlords and public mm-hmm. o- house owners. Um, the Metropolitan Act 1839 mm-hmm. um, makes it illegal to carry a, a plank along the pavement. Mm-hmm. It also covers other acts such as flying kites, playing annoying games and sliding on ice or snow in the street. Interesting. Well, we've not had any snow this uh, this year and I no. doubt we will. But It's questionable whether... It's enforceable. You know, whether the police would into, you know, mm. it would be in the interest of mm-hmm. in just, the public. Yeah. But again, I suppose this is just for safety concerns. Mm-hmm. You know, pavement is often next to a road, um, interference of others walking. Mm-hmm. So back in 1839, it was deemed a, um, a, a nuisance yeah. and an issue that needed to be dealt with. 
Interesting. Thank you for that, Dean. Um, and the next one is, is it illegal to fire a cannon within 300 yards of a dwelling house? Yes. Mm. And again, same same piece of legislation, the Metropolitan Police Act, mm -hmm. 1839. They had clearly a lot of issues here, kites, cannons. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Planks. <laughs> Which is telling off the time, but mm -hmm. yes, uh, at the time the parliament thought um, in the wisdom that, it, and for good reason, I would imagine, firing mm. a cannon would be dangerous, mm -hmm. um, and let alone the damage and smash windows, I'm sure, mm. that was experienced in the past. Interesting. Um, so I think before the break, I mentioned briefly that we would discuss about fly tipping. Um, so the next question, Dean, is, is it illegal to leave baggage unattended. I believe it's not quite, I think it is, it depends. Um. Well, re regarding this one, it's in relation to uh, fly tipping. Um, it actually, the Town Police Clauses Act 1847 made it an offence to leave any furniture or goods or merchandise on the footway. And I believe that applies to fly tipping in this day and age. Is that correct? Yes. So, you know, it's, it's not... It, 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 that applies to fly tipping. You mm -hmm. can see the crossover. Mm -hmm. um, so in reference to your earlier question, sorry, yeah. um, it, it's not quite, you know, um, illegal to mm -hmm. leave baggage unattended. But certainly um, interfering in, in any way of a footway, uh, mm -hmm. footway would do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you think about this, with shop owners, for example, yeah. holding out um, stands outside their shop. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed, they're prohibited you're often through licensing or, you know, um, from interrupting any sh shoppers from tra walking past their store. Yeah. So, yes. Okay. And just in relation, just to touch on fly tipping, fly tipping is defined as um, the illegal deposit of any waste onto land that does not have a license to accept it. So it is a criminal offence um, to fly tip, um, whatever it is, whether it's papers, waste, um, electronics. Um, it is an illegal offence and it's actually, um, you can be imprisoned and fined. And even the vehicle that was used to possibly, if it was involved in fly tipping, could actually be confiscated. So if you have an issue with fly tipping maybe in your area, um, you can report it to your um, local council um, or you can inform the police, but make sure you have information as to if you do see a registration number, if you're aware of the person, um, that is actually quite enforceable. The reason I'm saying this is a lot of the laws that we did speak on, um, even though they are illegal, a lot of them aren't enforceable, but fly tipping is a growing issue and it definitely is um, enforceable. So please bear that in mind. Um, so carrying on with the questions, Dean, um, is it illegal to drive cows down the roadway without the permission of the commissioner of police? Yes, without permission of the police, it's actually illegal to to uh, drive cattle through the streets between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Interesting. And without going off topic, I mean, it's possible that could um, apply to horses, right? Because we do live in not a rural area, but we are surrounded quite... Um, surrounded by a lot of uh, villages. Well, often, um, I, I, I feel that this, uh, I'll have to research into mm. that question. Mm -hmm. It's a very unique, precise question. But mm. certainly, um, <laughs> Sorry. horses, you know, there's brighter ways and there's, there's an expectation that horses are different to cattle. Mm -hmm. Cattle here, a group of cows or, you know, bulls mm -hmm. traveling down. You know, from a, from a perspective of, if, if you can imagine your journey to work mm -hmm. at nine o'clock. Yeah. Um, having to make yeah having to make that journey quickly into mm. work and you're being stuck behind a herd of cows mm. it, you know disruption yeah <laughs> you can day. imagine the chaos that would, would come from it yeah um so it's still in force uh you know for for large well-built up towns mm -hmm. i'm sure it plays no bother yeah maybe more rural rural mm, like i don't know villages, if we possibly. have any listeners rurally <laughs> they could call in and tell us whether they have any stories to tell us <laughs> so. Um, next question. Is it illegal to hang a bed out of a window? Not quite. This is a bit of a, a grey one mm -hmm. and I had to look into it to understand it. Um, 
it's not illegal per se to hang a bed out of a window. Mm -hmm. Um, But it is covered sort of underneath a a law that was called the Town Police Clauses Act, Mm -hmm. 1847. Um, But it was really in reference to heavy objects being placed on a a windowsill uh, to stop it from being blown uh, down, um, such as flower pots. Uh, It doesn't mention a bed per se. Mm. But, you know, the principle is if you're hanging out anything out of a window, it could cause injury, Mm -hmm. damage to other, you know, a parked vehicle, for Mm. example. So back in the day, yes. Interesting. And just go with the flower pots, that's enforced. It is illegal? Yes, it is. That's something a lot of us do. Yeah, it's it's to, to, it's really to, you know, a bit of common sense here, Mm. I understand. Mm. Now, you know, if you're going to put a heavy flower plot in, uh, pot on a on a small yeah. ledge, window mm-hmm. ledge, what you know, you, common sense, I suppose, would be: is it going to fall? Yeah. Or is it going to be easily blown away? Mm-hmm. You know. Um, okay. So yeah, something to bear in mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, is it illegal to be drunk in charge of a horse? I feel like this is common sense, but go ahead. Yes, under the Licensing Act, uh, 1872, I should add, not mm-hmm. 2003, what, what we were speaking about earlier. Yeah. Um, it is an offence to be char- drunk in charge of a carriage, a horse, a cow, mm-hmm. or steam engine. Okay. Um, it's even uh, while in possession of a loaded firearm. But as we well know now, unless mm. you have a licence for a firearm, that yeah, no yes. longer really applies mm. as they're legal to have. But mm-hmm. certainly, yes. Um, and really, that's common sense. And you can apply could, that today, really. Yeah. Mode of transport, you can't be drunk behind the wheel. Will. Yeah. So back in the time, cars weren't really a, a, an invention then, mm. or common, certainly. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Um, There's one other area of um, topic that I wanted to take you on, actually, on okay. the subject of... Go um, ahead. Um, flower pots on window vases mm. and beds out of windows. Mm-hmm. Um, it used to be, it's still illegal, for example, to beat or shake uh, your carpet or rug uh, in the street. Yes. Which um, is something we, I, I do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, however, shaking a doormat is allowed before 8 a.m. So there's okay. an exception to this. Mm-hmm. And that's covered under the same, same legislation as um, what we were just speaking about yeah. before. Um, but in addition to that, uh, you know, these novelties, mm-hmm. there are other things that still apply, uh, mm-hmm. such as keeping a pigsty in front of your house, um, erecting and wash, uh, a, ro- a washing line across the street, mm. um, wolf, um, disturbing people by ringing the doorbells and knocking at the doors. Yeah, that, that is an, Ill- it's an illegal offence, yeah, isn't so, it? I learned that, you know, knock down ginger, as they say. Yeah, it's that's illegal. A, an illegal offence. And, you know, that's been enforced now since um, 1847. Interesting. So I'm sure a lot of the lists you've just given about um, putting the line, washing line against the, um, along the street, a lot of them nowadays, I guess we would say, oh, it doesn't really apply, that doesn't happen. But any children listening out there, knockdown ginger is yeah, illegal. And, as, and as, some people may complain and want to bring it up. So, And certainly these laws, when they did come into place, these issues were clearly a problem yeah yeah and now we don't give it second thought Mm -hmm. but certainly they did change our habits and behavior Mm -hmm. um and another one that gets me is um singing um well doesn't really get me but singing profane or obscene ballads or songs in the streets Mm -hmm. so all all footballers coming home Mm. you know it does raise questions and that kind of links leads to the public order yeah, all offenses, the offenses. Yeah, right. And the clampdown now, which we're seeing in football stadiums mm-hmm. themselves mm-hmm. And, and against, you know, such chance. Mm. So we can now see the rele- uh, re- relevance to um, today. Um, so next question, Dean. Um, is it illegal to eat mince pies on Christmas Day? I no. I season Christmas has just gone, but... But I, I, again, this, this needs to be understood. And the only way we can understand this mm-hmm. was that... Back in um, 1644, it was Mm -hmm. illegal to eat mince pies. And this was during uh, Oliver Cromwell's time and the uh, reformers, Mm. uh, uh, Puritanists, sorry, not reformers, um, Puritans, who who saw celebrations of Christmas as Mm. going against uh, Christianity um, and and was considered obscene. Okay. Um, And and not really to, you know, uh, something that should be celebrated in any great, 
mm-hmm. um, way. Mm-hmm. Um, so what we saw was a clampdown on Christmas celebrations for almost a period of 20 years okay. during this time mm-hmm. um, until, you know, the demise of Oliver Cromwell mm-hmm. and the reinstatement of the monarchy. Interesting. So, yes, once a time it used to be. Mm-hmm. And now, nowadays, that's the thing that's yeah. <laughs> selling in the shops around that time of the year. Interesting. Okay, so next question, Dean. Um, is it illegal? Is it legal to shoot a Welshman with a longbow on Sunday in the cathedral closed in Hereford, or inside the city walls of Chester after midnight, or a Scotsman within the city walls of York other than on a Sunday? That's a bit of a mouthful, and I wonder why such a specific um, legal question had been asked. But again. So some will say that it, it, it um, appeared in a city ordinance. So mm-hmm. back in the time, local laws, there was a much greater power on local authorities to create laws and mm-hmm. ordinances. Mm-hmm. We don't see this so much now because a lot of it is governed by parliament mm-hmm. um, and local authorities are now empowered to enforce those. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the time, it was stated that this was could be found in an ordinance, mm-hmm. so an old, old law. That was applied only to Chester. However, it's a myth. Okay. And I remember certainly reading this as a, as a youth, as a law student, that mm-hmm. this, was a, this was a common myth. Mm-hmm. But no, it doesn't exist. Okay. And in actual fact, it would be, um, you know, it would uh, now be amount to unlawful killing and certainly would be a law that would be mm. repealed. Interesting. Okay. And should be appeal- repealed, but yeah. doesn't exist. Okay. Um, next one is, is it illegal to move a body across a parish or county boundary unless a fee is paid and a coffin is used. If a body is moved across private land, will it create a public footpath? Um, no, it's never existed. And um, th- this question, it's, um, I think it applies to old, uh, from my research, from old tolls mm-hmm. on, on roads um, we used to carry items across. Okay. Um, so markets... Mark stalls and you know um, carriages mm-hmm. would have to pay additional toll mm-hmm. for use of the road, but no, there's been nothing. Okay, interesting. Um, next one is um, in Liverpool. Is it illegal for a woman? Oh no, sorry, wrong question. Um, is it illegal to flag a taxi if you have the plague? Yes, and it's <laughs> um, well. It's one of those half in, half out mm-hmm. ones, actually, and um, may be a bit applicable today, uh, I guess, with mm. the coronavirus. Yeah. Um, if you can compare that to a plague, but certainly um, under the Public Health Act, mm-hmm. 1984, so not a very old, old law. Yeah. Um, any person uh, who is known to be suffering from a notifiable disease, mm-hmm. okay, which includes the plague. Um, must notify their taxi driver whether mm. th- uh, that they have this, the plague. Mm-hmm. And then it's for the taxi driver to decide whether he, he wishes to. to transport you or not. Mm. Um, but it wouldn't apply to a bus. Um, it, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have the option. A bus driver wouldn't have the option. It, it would just be a no. So if you he, know... So he, the bus driver is bound to say no. Is bound to say no. But a taxi okay. driver would be permitted to say yes. Okay. I'm not sure how many taxi drivers would want to take the gamble mm. and the risk. Mm-hmm. Um, and certainly the law goes on to say that um, once the taxi driver had to convey the passenger, so tr- transported the passenger with the plague mm-hmm. or any other notifiable diseases, he must then notify the local authority and have it disinfected. That could apply so, nowadays. yeah, so certainly if you believed you had the coronavirus, mm-hmm. uh, there seems to be a duty uh, on you to notify certainly Mm. in the public Mm. um, others who you could put in direct contact that you have this disease or potentially could be at risk Mm -hmm. and certainly from reading the legislation and from understanding it how it wouldn't apply to a bus yeah it's it's because it filled is filled with public yeah public people and Mm. you know and certainly limitation of um spreading interesting so yes so maybe we could see this law possibly (laughs) well hopefully not hopefully not hopefully not um next question Dean, um, does London hackney carriages, so a black cab that we all know and quite often use, must they carry a bale of hay and a sack of oats? 
Um, this all, no, this is a note, but this refers back to um, when um, taxis were horse and carriages. Mm-hmm. And at, at the time, it, it set in conditions on how horses must be fed. Um, and that was out of a bag and um, all with his hands, mm-hmm. rather as opposed to um, carrying a sack of oats. Okay. So he didn't make it, it wasn't enforced at the time. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. Next question is quite um, relevant for today. Uh, a lot of the stuff we buy now is not in shops. We do a lot of online shopping, um, Hermes, Real Mail, Amazon, dropping off packages. So, Dean, is it illegal to pick up an abandoned package? Mm, again, this is a, a, a one that we have to qualify. Mm-hmm. Yes and no. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an offence to intentionally open or delay a postal packet. Mm-hmm. Interfering with someone else's packet uh, may also amount to a trespass to the goods. Interesting. So, yes, is the answer. It mm-hmm. would be... what well, Abandoned package would have to imply that it has no ownership. Mm. Okay. So, but how to prove how, that package, exactly. yeah, package has no ownership, we would have to see. But it's common sense. If you believed mm. you saw a pass outside, you wouldn't assume it was abandoned. Yeah, you would just wait for the owner to pick up their package. Okay. Um, quickly, one more. Um, in London, Dean, companies make, um, is it illegal for companies to vote in local elections? Because I believe companies are separate bodies from the directors and shareholders. Um, this applies only to a small area in London. It's called a, a city of, uh, to the city of London itself, mm-hmm. um, which is governed by the City of London Corporation. Mm-hmm. Um, and and they, they have uh, their own unique rules and, mm-hmm. and elections procedures. So, yes, mm-hmm. not, but not quite. Okay, interesting. I think we're coming towards the end of the show. We've covered quite a lot. Um, we are live on Facebook, so you can go back and listen to this um, segment. So thank you for joining me, Dean, um, and we shall see you guys next week. Thank you for listening to our podcast. We stream our daily broadcast on inspirefm.org. You'll find all our daily updates on our social media at inspirefmluton.org.